Adventure time, come on, grab your friends, you come to very distant lands. Could you show 107 more facts about Adventure Time? My name is Leah, I hope you have a great day. Bye! Adventure Time is beautiful, quirky, fun, and powerful all at once. So could only 107 piddly little facts be enough for such an amazing show? Of course not. That's why we've compiled 107 more facts on Pendleton Ward's epic animated adventure. We also did it because a bunch of you requested it. And since you can't seem to get enough random trivia about Finn, Jake, and the rest of the gang, we're here to help. My name is Tim, and today on Channel Frederator, we have 107 more Adventure Time facts. Let's get started. Number one, Pendleton Ward's goal in creating Adventure Time was to give kids real, relatable characters that could reach their hearts. Aww. Number two, Ward's opportunity to make the Adventure Time short came after Frederator Moderators Eric Homan saw Ward's student film, The Producer's Show, and an end-of-year screening at Cal Arts. Eric proceeded to ask Ward for a pitch, and the rest, as they say, is history. Number three, it took Ward two weeks to storyboard the Adventure Time short. Number four, according to Fred Seibert, the founder and CEO of Frederator, that's our boss. Ward's pitch began with him playing the Adventure Time theme song on a guitar he brought with him. Fred claimed he had never seen a pitch quite like it before. Number five, working on the Adventure Time short was Ward's first job out of college. Number six, during season five, Ward stepped down as Adventure Time's showrunner and passed the torch to the show's creative director, Adam Muto. However, Ward is far from done with Adventure Time as he still contributes to the show's writing and will even be heavily involved with the Adventure Time movie. Number seven, Ward put a lot of thought into making female characters of the show since he's not a fan of the stereotypical molds TV usually forces women into. He was sure to give the ladies strengths and weaknesses to make them feel like real people. He cites Princess Bubblegum as a prime example of this. While she's extremely intelligent, she's also kind of a goofball that botches up plenty of her experiments. Number 8. Marceline is the only main character that didn't appear in the original short. Number 9. The only main character whose voice went unchanged between the original short and the series was Jake the Dog, who is played by John DiMaggio in both. Ward would later reprise his role as Abraham Lincoln in the episode Sons of Mars. Number 10. Despite this, DiMaggio and Ward aren't the only voice actors to play a role in both the short and the series. Lady Rainicorn's original Original voice actor D. Bradley Baker went on to voice multiple characters in the show, most notably Cinnamon Bun. Number 11. The title Princess Potluck was one of the proposed episode titles in Ward's original pitch presentation for Adventure Time. Mudo claims the season 4 episode of the same name had nothing to do with Ward's original idea for the episode. Number 12. In the original pitch presentation, it was stated that Jake and Lady Rainicorn were in a band together called The Angel Cakes, where they played a fusion of classical and bluegrass. They would hold rehearsals in Princess Bubblegum's garage every Thursday. Number 13, a conceptual map of Ooh refers to the Fire Kingdom as the Burning Lands. Number 14, Finn's original name in the Adventure Time short, Pen, is actually explained in issue 9 of the Adventure Time comic. Finn went through a phase in his life where he had a fascination with pens, so much so that he temporarily changed his name to Pen. Number 15, this comic also features an explanation for one of the short's most obvious continuity errors. In the original short, Pen's sleeping bag mysteriously vanishes after a few shots. The the comic states that the sleeping bag was stolen by a time-traveling Finn and Jake who were watching them from behind a hill. Number 16. In the storyboards for Burning Low, Jake talks about an additional relationship tier. When talking about tier 9, Jake was supposed to say, on that one just make sure you have a comfy place to sit in the next day, cause uh, you'll need time to reflect on what you did. Number 17. According to the original storyboards for his hero, Billy's name was originally Hogarth. Number 18. Early storyboards show that Finn's dad was meant to be revealed in the episode episode, The Lich. It probably makes sense that he wasn't. That would have been a lot going on. Number 19. Former Adventure Time storyboard artist Rebecca Sugar refers to Abraham Lincoln as the Jesus Christ. However, Mudo claims Lincoln is simply a recognizable figure and that calling him Jesus would be a stretch. Number 20. Marshall Lee wasn't meant to be just a silent cameo in the first Fiona and Cake episode. Sugar wrote lines for the character. Unfortunately, his speaking role was cut due to time constraints. Number 21. Sugar wanted Marshall Lee to be played by Dante 
Monte Bosco, better known as Prince Zuko on Avatar The Last Airbender. Number 22. Despite being an unmarried royal female, Flame Princess was referred to by the show's writers as the Flame King after she staged a coup on her father and took control of the Fire Kingdom. Number 23. According to Jack Pendarvis, a writer for the show, Stephen King was seriously considered to be the voice of Root Beer Guy, but nobody ever approached the author about it. Number 24. The show's writers keep track of all narrative loose ends with a piece of paper labeled Unresolved Stories. Two topics that formerly had spots on the list were Finn's dad and the Lich. Number 25. Natasha Allegri, a writer for the show, lied to a fan about Arthur Cade voicing Marsha Lee because she wanted to see fans create a page for Arthur Cade on the Adventure Time wiki. Number 26. The various pronunciations the Ice King makes with the name Gunter were the result of inconsistency with how the name was spelled in the script. Gunter. Gunter, wake up. Sometimes the U in Gunter would possess an umlaut and other times it wouldn't, which would cause Tom Kenny to pronounce it differently. As a result, it was decided by the writers that the Ice King had multiple penguins that he called Gunter using different pronunciations. Number 27. Olivia Olsen got the role of Marceline through her father, Martin Olsen, who knew Ward prior to Adventure Time. Ward said he was interested in casting the voiced actress that played Vanessa Doofenshmirtz on the show Phineas and Ferb, which Martin wrote for. So when Ward asked him how he could get in touch with her, Martin revealed that she was his daughter. Number 28. Marceline's immortality is the result of her being a vampire, not half-demon. The only demon trait she inherited from her father was the ability to suck souls. Number 29. Olivia Olsen recently got in touch with her inner vampire queen and wrote an Adventure Time book called Marcy's Super Secret Scrapbook. The other half of this book is called The Enchiridion, written by her father, Martin Olsen. Number 30. The Earl of Lemongrab is voiced by Justin Rowland. You may know him as the creator and voice behind Rick and Morty. Number 31. Playing Lemongrab is is extremely strenuous on Justin Rowland's voice, so much so that it usually takes two recording sessions to record all of his dialogue for an episode. This is unacceptable! something no other actor on the show has ever had to do. Number 32. Lemon Grab was meant to be a one-off character that the show's staff thought would never take off. Unfortunately for Justin Rowland's vocal cords, the character was so popular that Lemon Grab became a recurring character with a legion of Lemon citizens, also voiced by Rowland. Number 33. Banana Man is played by the famous parody musician Weird Al Yankovic, which, yes, he is famous for being a parody musician, but I think it's also fair to point out that he has original songs, too. Number 34. Voice actor Dana Snyder plays the ancient sleeping magi of life-giving, a wizard who grants life to inanimate objects that go on to terrorize people. This is a regular occurrence in Snyder's other show, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, where he voices Master Shake. Hey everyone, break time again, this time with something a little bit important. If you're used to seeing Channel Frederator's 107s go up on Thursday, you might want to adjust your schedule a little bit, because we're going to be uploading them on Fridays now. So go ahead, adjust your calendars and your schedules, make all the appropriate Rebecca Black references, and let's get back to the facts. Number 35. Flame King is played by Primetime Emmy Award winner Keith David. David's previous roles include Captain Anderson from Mass Effect and the Arbiter from the Halo series. Number 36. In the episode Evergreen the Candy Elemental, Chatsbury is voiced by Alan Tudyk, who coincidentally played King Candy in the Disney film Wreck-It Ralph. Number 37. Finn's alter ego, Davy Johnson, is played by an actor named, you guessed it, Davy Johnson. Number 38. John DiMaggio, the voice of Jake, refers to Adventure Time as this generation's Yellow Submarine. Number 39. The episode Everything's Jake reunited DiMaggio with his Futurama co-star, Billy West. West plays Jake's in-flesh best friend, Goost, and a scientist named Eric Adamkinson, both of whom mirror his roles of Philip J. Fry and Professor Hubert Farnsworth in the Graining cartoon. Number 40. Finn's hero, Billy, is voiced by Lou Ferrigno. Ferrigno is best known for his numerous portrayals of the Incredible Hulk. Number 41. The Lich's voice is provided by the man behind Hellboy, Ron Perlman. Number 42. While it currently appears as though Flame Princess has no interest in re-establishing a romantic relationship with Finn, her voice actress, Jessica DiCicco, is a huge advocate of the pairing and wants them to get back together in the future. Number 43. Jeremy Shotta, the voice of Finn, started a band with his brother Zack called Make Out Monday. Number 44. Shotta had the most fun making Trouble in Lumpy Space because because he and DiMaggio loved impersonating lumpy space people. Number 45. When asked if he and Finn had anything in common, Shada said both of them are terrible at math. Number 46. DiMaggio's favorite Adventure Time fan creation is a mashup of Jake's Bacon Pancakes song and Jay-Z's Empire State of Mind. Number 47. The original lyrics for the song All Warmed Up Inside were a bit too suggestive. Sugar's original demo started off the song with Oh Flame Princess, I Like Your Dress. You're like a beautiful treasure. I want to open your chest. 
Number 48, Flame King's original response to the song was even less subtle. His line being, a fire inside my body? That's pornographic. Number 49, Marceline's famous Fry song was originally much darker. It focused more on her father abandoning her and the issues she had because of it. A verse in the original song, why did you make me if you're not gonna take me to get a burger and shaky, inspired the idea that her father ate her fries, and with Ward's help, it became the song we know and love today. Number 50, the song that plays during the show's credits is called Christmas Island. It was written and performed by the indie band Lake. Number 51, in Simon and Marcy, Simon sings a song called Where Everybody Knows Your Name. Making your way in the world today takes everything you've got! Unlike just about every song performed in the show, this is not a song created by the Adventure Time staff. The song is actually the theme to an American sitcom, Cheers, which ran from 1982 to 1993. Dun, da, 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 dun, dun. Number 52. Some of the scenes in King Worm were based on YouTube poop videos. Pendleton Ward is a big fan. Number 53. The name Catalyst Comic may be a play on a device used in writing stories called a Catalyst, an inciting incident that sets the narrative's conflict into motion. This would hold true for the Catalyst comic, which sets up a conflict that causes Finn and Jake to spring into action and stop its collision with Earth. Number 54. In the episode No One Can Hear You, the deer sticks candy people to the sewer walls in a gooey substance, and the xenomorphs from the Alien franchise trap their prey in an identical manner. Number 55. In the episode Red Starved, it's revealed that Finn suffers from a form of color blindness known as Deuteranomaly, where one often mixes up red and green colors. Number 56. Despite establishing that Finn has a few of the ocean in season one, he doesn't appear faced by it at all when he and Jake are at the beach during the earlier episode, Business Time. Number 57, the most heavily censored episode in the series is Trouble in Lumpy Space for its seemingly endless innuendos. Number 58, the braille message in The Great Birdman actually reads, Dear Zergiak, thank you for your donation. The kidneys fit great. Number 59, the show's staff refer to the shapeshifter seen in Joshua and Margaret's investigations as the peeper. Number 60, the crew behind Trouble in Lumpy Space forgot to include a snail cameo in the episode. The snail was added in later after the episode first aired and now appears in the rerun version. Number 61. The new intro sequence seen throughout the miniseries, Stakes, was created by Masaki Yusa's animation studio called Science Saru. Number 62. In Stakes, there is an episode where Princess Bubblegum is seen wearing an intriguing dress. This dress is a traditional Korean hanbok. It fits in line with the Korean undertones that are pervasive throughout the show. Number 63. In the episode, Everything Stays, Two Bread Tom and Marceline sing a cover of the song According to Our New Arrival, the theme song from the sitcom Mr. Belvedere. Number 64, the Hierophant, the Fool, the Moon, and the Empress, the opponents that Marceline faces off against in stakes, share their name with tarot cards. Number 65, despite the fact that Food Chain is non-canonical, the song featured in the episode reappears at the end of The Cooler, performed by Finn and Jake. Number 66, the episode A Glitch is a Glitch was single-handedly written, storyboarded, and directed by animator David O'Reilly. Number 67, the season 4 episodes Bimo Noir and Princess Potluck take place at the same time. In both episodes, Jake's appearance at the end of each is identical, and Finn has lost a sock. Number 68, although it's never revealed in the episode itself, the theme of Another Five Short Grables is the five stages of grief. The first the first Grable shows Finn accepting a package from Jake. The second Grable shows Princess Bubblegum denying Cinnamon Bun his nightlight. The third Grable has Ice King bargaining with his penguins over what movie they should watch. The fourth depicts Lemon Grabs being angry at each other. And the final Grable, the fox notices a depression in his bed shaped just like him. Number 69. When Bimo cracks their screen in Bimo Lost, the character's face closely resembles the Mac OS Finder logo. Number 70. Finn's name may be derived from Finn McCombs a legendary Irish hero from the 3rd century. Number 71, the Ice King heavily resembles the Winter Warlock from the Christmas special Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Both characters can command snow and initially appear evil until it's revealed they have a warmer side to them. Number 72, Gunter's true form, Orgelorg, was originally intended to be the antagonist of a scrapped Adventure Time made-for-TV movie. Number 73, the Earl of Lemongrab appears to have half a phobia, or in layman's terms, the fear of being touched. Number 70. 
1974. One of the few things Lemongrab deems acceptable are tree trunks, apple pies. Number 75, Marceline loves music in the key of E flat. This is why she sings in lower keys. Number 76, when Marceline was a child, she fell into a pig pen and was licked by a huge hog that smelled putrid, unlike anything she had ever whiffed. From that moment on, she developed a fear of all pigs and hogs, with the experience becoming a recurring nightmare for her. Number 77, pigs aren't Marceline's only Achilles heel. The Vampire Queen developed a deep hatred of celery after a piece of it got caught in her teeth as a child. Removing it proved to be a traumatic experience for her. Number 78, Marceline's tongue is forked because she accidentally bit the tip of it while chewing a piece of gum. Number 79, Marceline's ex-boyfriend Ash was arrested by the East U Police Precinct for fencing stolen property, impersonating a wizard under the name Rag Wizard, stealing memories, and the totally legitimate crime of being a general pain in the butt. Number 80, Hudson Abadir has existed for so long that he doesn't even remember his own origins. Number 81, Death was the drummer in Hudson Abadir's first band. He was kicked out by Abadir for being better than him. Number 82, Bimo's voice is one of the many vocal settings on the device called Adorable Child. The setting tested positively with 20 imprisoned Nidosphere demons. Number 83, Lady Rainicorn's favorite drink is an iced latte without whipped cream. Number 84, although Lady Rainicorn's body can contains all the colors of the rainbow, it lacks the color orange. Number 85, Jake was taught how to read braille by an ex-girlfriend. Number 86, Flame Prince and Lady Lemongrab made their first appearance in the Adventure Time comics, not the TV show. Number 87, Jeremy Shada, the voice actor of Finn, states that the age gap between Finn and Jake is due to Jake's age being represented in dog years. In human years, both characters balance out. Number 88, Peppermint Butler has a vampire hunting kit to use on Marceline in case she ever goes rogue. Number 89, Peppermint Butler uses Cinnamon Bun as a vessel to communicate with spirits. Number 90. Princess Bubblegum suitor Braco has a helmet on the shelf in his room that resembles the one worn by Boba Fett in the Star Wars saga. Number 91. The Fiona and Cake episode, Bad Little Boy, is the first episode in the entire series where Finn and Jake do not appear at all. Number 92. After Jake tears up Finn's backpack to get the gold tooth in Gut Grinder, a piece of paper can be seen amongst the items that fall out of Finn's backpack. It reads, do not lose this paper, PB. Number 93, the lion form Jake takes in You Made Me resembles Pond de Leon, the mascot of a Japanese donut house. Number 94, the character Blastronaut from The Hitman greatly resembles Samus Aran, the protagonist of the Metroid video game series. Number 95, Root Beer Guy was originally killed off to justify the Banana Guard's continued stupidity, despite them being under his leadership. Number 96, the alternative farm world version of Finn seen in the season five premiere was first alluded to in the season four episode King Worm, when Finn looks into the mirror and sees this other Finn as his reflection. Number 97, Warner Bros. is in the early stages of developing an Adventure Time movie. The film is to be co-produced by Chris McKay, who served as an executive producer on the Lego movie. Number 98, some of the games Finn and Jake play on BMO throughout the series, like Compy's Castle and Pro Football 1861, were made into full playable games for the BMO iPhone app. Number 99, even though one of BMO's games is called Pro Football 1861, the first game of American football wasn't played until November 6, 1869, and the first game of professional American football occurred even later on November 12th, 1892. Number 100. Adventure Time contains hidden messages written in a runic code. These messages can be found on anything from swords to pictures. Number 101. In the video game Adventure Time, Explore the Dungeon Because I Don't Know, Flame Princess's introductory cutscene was censored in European versions because she calls Princess Bubblegum a tart. You try to destroy me, you tart! The word tart is a slang term for a promiscuous woman in some parts of Europe. Number 102. Fiona and Cake became so popular that they received their own comic book series. The better news is that it's not written or illustrated by the Ice King. Number 103. The existence of Magic and Ooh is the result of radiation from the Great Mushroom War. Number 104. One of the stickers Cinnamon Bun uses to attach his note to the front door in Earth and Water resembles Totoro from the Studio Ghibli film My Neighbor Totoro. Number 105. Above Marceline's closet is a head mounted to the wall that looks identical to the head of the Pale Man from Guillermo del Toro's film, 
Pan's Labyrinth. To make the reference complete, mounted to the right of the head is a severed hand with an eye in the center of the palm. Another distinct feature of the Pale Man. Number 106. The fan character that is most often requested to become a real character in the show is Water Princess. And finally, number 107. In the Simpsons episode Treehouse of Horrors 25, an alternative version of the Simpsons family that resembles characters from Adventure Time can be seen at the end of the final story. Thank you for watching Tune Ups 107s, where we cover everything you've ever wanted to know about your favorite cartoons. If you like this video, you might also enjoy our original 107 facts about Adventure Time or our top 13 life lessons you can learn from Adventure Time. Go ahead and check those out, we have links to them right now. And if you haven't heard me say it before, our video game Fly Cat Bug Fly is now completely free to play on the iOS and Android stores, so if you haven't checked it out before, now is a perfect time to do so. So go ahead, check that all out, and remember, Frederator loves you. Hi, I'm Kevin of I'm Kevin ah. from New Jersey. Can you please do 107 facts about Yokai Watch and also give Tim a cookie? Peace.